Hey guys, Yannick here in beautiful South Africa, but more importantly at a Moya Big Cat Sanctuary where Sarabi is spending the rest of her life. Now if you're not aware of my documentary called Saving Sarabi, I invite you to watch it down below. Now we brought Sarabi here two years ago and I wanted to do a follow-up to know what was going on, how was she doing. So I jumped on a plane and came back to Emoya and I have to say it's an incredibly emotional moment to see her two years later. She still has some room to fill up but she's at her full height and she's living the life of a princess. Um, she's now with the Bahati Pride. As you can see behind me, some of the members of the Pride are here. Uh, you'll have Tao and Raka, the two males, and Chanel and Sarabi. So there are four, and they're living in a huge enclosure. It's one hectare, so that's 100 meters by 100 meters. And as you can see, it's all natural African bush. And they also added some extra man-made um, surfaces and toys because as we know, cats are cats. Even big cats need to play and they need stimulation. What I did is spend the whole week here observing Sarabi and the other cats to see if she was happy, if she was having a full and beautiful life. And I can tell you one thing, she is. I'm actually, it's beyond what I expected. Um, she's fully integrated into this beautiful pride. I've seen her play with all of the, the lions here and it's just been an amazing experience. What I did for you guys is I sat down with the founder of Emoya Big Cat Sanctuary, Savannah Heuser, and she basically will tell you how it went from when we dropped her off two years ago till now. When she first arrived, I think the hunting farm had quite a big impact on her. We're, I think we're very lucky that she came at such a young age. Um, it was, I mean, it obviously affected her quite a bit. She was pretty much scared of everything when she first came, which became more evident as we went along. In the beginning, if she saw you, then she would fall flat and growl and make a run for it. It took quite a few months and it, it was simple things, you know, to show her that if you're wearing a hat, you're not gonna hurt her with it. Or if you um, come with a crate, it's not because you wanna hurt her, it's because you're bringing her food. If a leaf would fall, of, fall on her from, um, or, or if a tree onto her, I mean, she would make a run for it. It was interesting to see how she, you know, how one day she um, is absolutely petrified of a bush and the next day she realized it's not going to hurt her and it's actually quite fun to jump on it. Where she came from, she was basically in a very small enclosure with lots of other cats. So um, I think to her it was kind of a comfort to see them. From the beginning, I mean, she just wanted to be inside with one of the, either the boys or with Chanel, which kind of gave us a plan moving forward because Chanel was really petrified of the boys. Because Chanel's a little bit older, we thought she would take the dominant role. And then from there on, we'd put the two, the two and two together, um, just so that it is equal. Um, they tend to team up on each other. So that took us quite a while, but on Chanel's part. I mean, Sarabi was ready to go in with either one um, from the beginning. In the beginning, Sarabi was kind of like the nagging little sister. She didn't want to be alone. She didn't want to leave anyone alone. She was besotted with Chanel. She, she couldn't get over it. Um, and I think they had such a special relationship because Sarabi was the first lion that Chanel accepted. They were like, sisters and best friends um, all at one and I mean they protected each other they really stood up for each other um, if the boys got a little bit mean with Chanel then Sarabi would put an end to it as small as what she was she wouldn't take it that they were bullying her friend yeah and then with the boys um, she was she was like a nagging little sister to them as well um, always pulling on their manes or chasing their tails. As they grew older, it changed a little bit. They, they got a little bit more respect for each other. Um, and she, you know, she started seeing them for the, the dominant boys that they are. And she has quite a lot of respect for them now, but I still think the bond between her and Chanel is the, is the closest one. I think what I love best about her is that she was really the glue between, between all of the lions. She's, I mean, she's a magnificent lion on her own, but what she's given the rest of them, what she's given Chanel, I mean, she's basically given them the family that they've got. I will always, always respect her for that and be grateful for that. Um, I mean, she has literally given them what they have today. 
So there you have it. Sarabi is living a full and beautiful life here at Emoya Big Cat Sanctuary. And I invite you to follow Emoya and the Saving Sarabi page on Facebook. The links are down below. And uh, that's it for me. I'm signing off and I'll talk to you later.